February 9th, St. Apollonia, Virgin, and the Martyrs of Alexandria. At Alexandria in the year 249, a mob rose up instigated by a certain poet of Alexandria who pretended to foretell things to come. He stirred up this great city against the Christians on the motive of religion. The first victim of their rage was a venerable old man named Metras, whom they would have compelled to utter impious words against the worship of the true God, which, when he refused to do, they beat him with staffs, thrust splinters of reeds into his eyes, and having dragged him outside of the city, stoned him to death. The next person they seized was a Christian woman called Quinta, whom they carried to one of their temples to pay divine worship to the idol. She replied by cursing the false god many times, and she too was stoned to death. After this, the houses of the Christians were sacked and plundered, and they accepted the despoiling of their possessions with joy. Their constancy in this persecution was equal to their disinterestedness. For all who fell into the hands of the pagans, St. Dionysus knew of none that renounced Christ. The admirable Apollonia whom old age in the state of virginity rendered equally venerable, was next seized by them. The repeated blows on her jaws beat out all her teeth. At last they made a great fire without the city and threatened to cast her into it, if she did not utter certain impious words. She begged a moment's delay, as if it had been to deliberate on the proposal. But inspired by and under the direction of the Holy Ghost, she leaped of her own accord into the flames. They next exercised their fury on a holy man named Serapion and tortured him in his own house with great cruelty. After bruising his limbs, disjointing and breaking his bones, they threw him from the top of his house on to the pavement and so completed his martyrdom. A civil war among the pagan cities put an end to the fury this year, but the Edict of Theseus renewed it in the year 250. The last part of our saint's conduct is not proposed to our imitation, as self-murder is unjustifiable. Many of the church fathers agree with St. Austin and St. Augustine that her actions were influenced by a particular direction of the Holy Ghost. For it can never be lawful for a person by any action to willfully to concur to or hasten his own death. Among the martyrs in Alexandria, many went willingly and without fear to their death because they knew the martyr's crown was awaiting them. But the judges themselves were struck with amazement at the multitudes who came spontaneously to receive the crown of martyrdom. Women triumphed over torture until finally the judges were glad to execute them at once and put an end to the ignominy of their own defeat. Many saints who were not martyrs have longed to shed their blood for Christ. We, too, may pray to share some portion of their spirit. The slightest suffering for the faith, born with humility and courage, is proof that Christ has heard our prayer.